Good morning, everyone. I want to start today by confirming that Canada and the United States have agreed to extend by another 30 days the border measures that are currently in place. This is an important decision and one that will keep people on both sides of the border safe. It's another example of the excellent collaboration between our two countries, and I want to thank Minister Bill Blair for leading the discussions with the United States. Ce matin, je veux commencer en vous confirmant que le Canada et les États-Unis se sont entendus pour prolonger d'encore 30 jours les mesures frontalières qui sont déjà en place. C'est une décision importante qui va protéger les gens des deux côtés de la frontière, et je veux remercier le ministre Blair d'avoir mené ces discussions avec les États-Unis. We're all here today, but it is the weekend. And usually, a Saturday morning in April means getting outside to enjoy the sunshine, having a friend over for coffee, or just taking the kids to the park. But these aren't normal times. We're living through an unprecedented public health emergency, and we need to keep responding accordingly. So even as the weather gets nicer, and even in the weeks to come as we start seeing hopeful news, we can't let up. Because if we do, we could lose the progress that we've made. Last, uh, later today, you may see some new ads with people you know, like Haley Wickenheiser, Chris Hadfield, and Dr. Tam. And they'll remind you to stay home and save lives. That's how we keep each other safe. So stay at home. Limit your trips to the grocery store to less than once a week. If you do go out, keep two meters distance from each other and as you do your part, know that we're here to support you. Plus tard aujourd'hui, vous allez peut-être voir des publicités qui montrent des gens que vous connaissez, comme Laurent Duvernet Tardif, David Saint-Jacques et la Dr Mona Nemer, notre conseillère scientifique en chef. Ils vont vous rappeler de sauver des vies en restant chez vous. Comme je le dis souvent, tout le monde doit faire sa part. Au cours des dernières semaines, on a annoncé des mesures historiques pour vous aider à traverser cette crise. Avec la prestation d'urgence, la subvention salariale et les prêts aux petites entreprises, on appuie des millions de familles et de travailleurs à travers le pays. Mais il nous reste encore du travail à faire. Il nous reste encore des gens à aider. Donc aujourd'hui, j'annonce d'autres mesures de soutien ciblées. Notre gouvernement va allouer plus de 306 millions de dollars pour aider les entreprises autochtones. Le financement sera acheminé par l'entremise d'institutions financières autochtones et de l'Association nationale des sociétés autochtones. Ils permettront aux entreprises d'obtenir un prêt sans intérêt à court terme et des contributions non remboursables de façon à ce qu'elles puissent traverser la crise et surtout rebondir après. Les investissements annoncés aujourd'hui vont aider des milliers d'entreprises à, à, à tenir le coup jusqu'à ce que la situation s'améliore, y compris beaucoup d'entreprises dirigées par des femmes autochtones. Ces entreprises emploient des gens d'un bout à l'autre du pays dans beaucoup de secteurs. Et c'est une première étape. Bientôt, on va annoncer d'autres mesures pour soutenir les entreprises autochtones et leurs employés. This morning, I am very happy to announce that the government will allocate more than $306 million to give Indigenous businesses the support they need. This funding will be provided through Aboriginal financial institutions and administered by the National Aboriginal Capital Corporations Association. It will allow Indigenous businesses to access short-term interest-free loans and non-repayable contributions so they are better positioned to make it through and rebound after this crisis. Today's investment will help thousands of businesses bridge to better times, including many that are owned and run by Indigenous women. These businesses employ people right across the country, in small communities and big cities alike. They create good jobs in a whole range of sectors, so when we support them, we're supporting families and workers too. And this is just a first step. We'll have more to say soon on what else we'll do to help Indigenous businesses and the people who rely on them. 
Small business owners are at the heart of so many communities. And this is a tough time, whether you own a store, a restaurant, or are part of the hospitality sector. So we're going to be there for you with this new investment and with measures like the Canada Emergency Business Account, the wage subsidy, and the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, we're focused on helping you. It will get easier, but until it does, we need to be prepared to persevere. And that includes ensuring that our frontline workers have the equipment and tools they need to do their jobs and stay safe. Yesterday, two planes full of N95 masks and coveralls arrived in Canada. More shipments will be coming in this week, coming in this weekend and into next week with additional medical supplies. I can also announce that we will begin receiving deliveries of face shields from Toronto Stamp very soon. They've shifted from their usual production of rubber stamps and ID badges and will be providing millions of face shields over the next two months. Le Canada continue de recevoir des envois d'équipements de protection individuelle. Hier, deux avions sont arrivés avec des masques N95 et des combinaisons. Et d'autres avions transportant du matériel médical arriveront en fin de semaine et au courant de la semaine prochaine. On attend tous avec impatience le moment où tout sera, sera fini. On attend tous les samedis où on va pouvoir voir nos amis ou amener nos enfants à un anniversaire. Ce jour-là va arriver, mais seulement si tout le monde continue de faire sa part. Donc cette fin de semaine, restez chez vous. Continuez de suivre les directives des experts et ensemble, on va passer à travers. Merci.